Do you mind? Thank you. Right. Oh, I've got a joke to explain, everybody. Settle down, settle down. I don't see everybody's copy books out. Hmm. Spooky lot, where is your pencil? I don't think you're going to find anything in there. Eyes on the board. Right. Spooky lot asks for this joke to be explained. Two muffins were sitting in the oven, and the first looks over to the second and says, Man, it's really hot in here. Second looks over at the first with a surprised look and answers, Whoa! Talking muffin. Yeah. So what's a muffin? That's a very important thing. A muffin is a sort of... Um, it's, oh, hang on. It's a sort of cake. It's sort of a cakey bread product. It's usually... Crinkly, 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 crinkly. It's not a cupcake. No, no. It's breadier than a cupcake. But, um, yeah, I'm going to take too long drawing this muffin now, but I'm committed to the paper. Sometimes you get chocolate mush mu muffins. Sometimes you get uh, blueberry muffins. Uh, you get um, raspberry and white chocolate muffins. Uh, you get um, sort of carrot cake muffins. Uh, you get... Um, Oh, uh, fruit and uh, sort of fruit and granola muffins. I quite like those, but they seem a bit sort of um, what's the word? Dull. But uh, I like. I quite like. I quite like those. I quite like those. Anyway, the point is, it's it's a it's a it's just a muffin. You know, it's just, it's just a cake. It's not alive. It's not sentient. Yeah, yeah. However, in the world of jokes, you see, in the world of jokes. Um, it's often the case that uh, we will, what you call, anthropomorphize, anthropomorphize to make human, as it were, um, uh, things that are not human. So we might have, uh, for instance, there's the joke, um, two snowmen in a field, uh, one snowman says to the other one, can you smell carrots, you see. Now, snowmen can't speak, you see, but uh, we, we invest in them the power of speech and sentience and smell. Uh, in order, in order to, to hook a joke onto it, you see, it's a little sort of mini little fantasy. Okay, so um, in this particular joke, we have one muffin. There's two muffins in the joke, but this this one muffin. Um, hello. Yes, this one muffin, and he says to his fellow muffin. Um, Man, it's really hot in here. Now, the other muffin, the other muffin, the other muffin, um, also has the power of sentience and speech, but also knows that uh, muffins don't, by, by and large, have the power of, of, of thought and speech. And so it's struck by shock. Whoa! The muffin says, a talking muffin. So uh, the, the first sort of joke there, really, firstly, is that... Um, it's sort of breaking the, the fourth wall of the joke, if you will. Fourth wall. You know, when you go and see a play in a theatre, there's usually like a left wall and a right wall and a far wall. But there's no fourth wall. The fourth wall is a sort of invisible wall through which the audience peers, you see. So when, when, it, when something draws attention to its un, own unreality, we talk about breaking the fourth wall to essentially demonstrate that the fourth wall doesn't exist and that what you're watching is just a construct. Yes. So here, the first sort of level of the joke is, is that sort of breaking the fourth wall, which is often funny, you know. So, oh, oh, you've, you've made me accept this conceit about the talking muffin, and now you're inviting me to question the conceit uh, because um, muffins don't talk in real life. And the second level, well, I do like finding a second layer, uh, the second layer of the joke is, um, is that the other thing, the thing that notices that this is a joke, or theoretically, that, that something's amiss, something isn't matching up with reality, is itself a muffin, you see. The muffin, the second muffin, isn't struck by the fact that it can think and it can talk. It's only struck by the fact that its fellow muffin can speak and talk. Perhaps the muffin doesn't know it's a muffin. Perhaps it's assumed that it is not a muffin because it can think and speak. Yeah. So uh, for all of that, all of that package, all that joyous little package, uh, leads to a humorous response and... Um, 
yes, uh, spooky enough. Have I explained that joke to your satisfaction, sir? Only if you always have time, always have time to explain a joke. Sometimes it's not the time that the joke was requested. Excellent fourth wall expert. Thank you, M. Curtains. I understand it now. Hurrah! Good work, good work. Okay, well, as you've all been so good, um, we're going to break for games early. Okay? Marvellous.